Without a doubt, I was stuck with being a girl. I used to be afraid that one day a purse would just appear in the crook of my arm like an extra limb. It terrified me. Then I got into it, to creating yourself as a work of art. Hello, I'm Alistair Newton, and I'm speaking today with Rose Cullis, the playwright of The Happy Woman, and Mev Beattie, who is one of the stars. Um, so, Rose, can you speak a little bit about the genesis of the piece? Sure. Um, for me, I was in Spain, and I was staying in this small village and going to a little cafe every morning, and I kept seeing this older woman who was standing by working. She clearly worked really hard, and she was beaming. She had this exuberant joyfulness, and I found her fascinating. And so I began the story with an older woman who always sees the cup half full, making her way home from the market, and she bumps into her neighbor, her more cynical neighbor, who becomes in the play the chorus. She uh, gossips with the audience and tells the audience all kinds of things about what's actually going on in the happy woman's life. I mean, Cassie wasn't like that. I mean, she was a tomboy. Margaret would let her run around without a shirt on until she was like 10 or 11 and her nipples started poking out. And Mev Beatty, who plays Cassie, who's the daughter in the piece, um, can you speak a little bit about, uh, about the character and her sort of journey in the piece? Yeah, um, the, the thing that I, there are a lot of things that draw me to Cassie personally and uh, you know, a, a huge part of that is her relationship to uh, taboo and her relationship to stigma and trying to work against stigma and and I, in part of looking into Cassie I was researching the word taboo and it's actually a Polynesian word that means um, yes what we expect it to mean which is forbidden but also put aside or set aside as sacred is mm, the origin of the word and I was like bang <laughs> I was like that's my Cassie you know is this this woman who says that the things that we keep hidden uh, you know are separate they are sublime but they are to be investigated and celebrated and treated as sacred and she she is wrestling with that with lies and truth and taboo and sense of freedom I think in, a, in a, an attempt to find her own way to be the happy woman. Nowadays, women aren't supposed to have pussy hair. Oops. There seems to be, in the last kind of five years, this trope of, of books and articles and a lot of people considering um, and kind of deconstructing this idea of happiness. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I kind of, I have two, I have two, uh, responses to the concept of happiness. Like on the one hand, I am moved by people who say, look, once we know about suffering in the world, once we're aware of our complicity and that's that suffering, how ethical is it to be happy? And this idea that happiness is a kind of bourgeois state of being. And I'm sympathetic to that, but I, I've also got another part of me that thinks that happiness is a sign of health and, and well-being and, and that if we have the opportunity to be happy, we also have the responsibility in that way to be happy. And so I think of happiness as a, as a touchstone. And if what you're doing in your life makes you unhappy or you find that you're unhappy, chronically unhappy, then it means it's time to uh, reevaluate. Right, and is, do you think that happiness is sort of the goal? Is it the end goal for, for all the characters in the play in their own particular way? I think it's certainly the goal for Margaret, the happy woman, and the goal for Cassie. I think both of them are, are seeking happiness. The others are, are, the others are seeking happiness, whether they're, is it their goal ultimately? Yeah, probably it is, except for the neighbor. Look at that. I can't believe what the girls wear these days. They might as well carry a sign that says, fuck me now. I mean, even the little girls are done up. Look at that. What was her mother thinking? She's there's something wonderful those. in the play that, know, that you are equating happiness or there's a struggle in a lot of these characters between the relationship with happiness and honesty yeah. and that seems to be the primal fight for in fact I would say each of them in the play. And if you open your eyes and you know certain things how do you go on happily in that or, sense? So, if you open your eyes, you will finally be happy because you will be living the truth yeah. and not, not, not lying. All right, thank you so much for speaking to me uh, today, Rose and, and Mav. Thank you yeah. so much, Alistair. All right, thank you. Guess I better hightail it to the salon downtown. They have a Friday date night special.
a Brazilian wax, a polish, and a martini.